Good morning, Geneva. Happy Friday. Um, we are back with some testimonies this week. I'm pretty excited for today. Uh, we've got uh, a good dear friend of mine with us today and Dr. Frazier with us today. And and so so I'm excited as as we are in, as Easter just happened and as we're in this season, um, that, that's hard, um, but we also know that there's hope. Um, I am excited to have uh, just different faculty and staff joining us every Friday to share a little story about when God has been with them uh, through times of trials. And so today uh, we have uh, my friend Kristen Slobodnik uh, with us today. Kristen is the administrative assistant in the Center for Student Engagement. Um, if I am the face of the Center for Student Engagement, Kristen is the heart and um, she's been uh, a part of our office since the beginning and has been at Geneva as a Geneva alum and has been at Geneva for about eight years now. And we are just uh, glad to have her with us today. Um, if you don't know Kristen, when we are back on campus, you need to get to know her. She's just a, a blessing to our campus in so many ways. So Kristen, thanks for being with us today. Uh, thanks for taking this time to share God's faithfulness in your life. And I look forward to just hearing what you have to say. Yeah, thanks. Um, so I'm just going to kind of give an overview of, of part of my life story, and actually a lot of it, of what I'm going to share today, ties into my experience at Geneva. Um, so I grew up in the church, which I loved, and I was very involved in my church. Uh, and there was this period of, of time where probably I was there for like four days a week doing various activities, whether it was um, youth group or choir or Bible quizzing or, you know, whatever. But we were there all the time. Um, and a lot of my close friends are from that church. And so there are a lot of things for me that was a really good experience. Um, but at the same time, I felt like my church also kind of presented me with a truncated view of the gospel. Um, and it wasn't a gospel that was untrue, certainly. Um, but we really focused on our own individual sin. And um, just the focus being on being able to go to heaven one day, and then the, and that was the end of the story. And so it felt like there was a lot of emphasis on, on rules and behaviors and that there was very little grace for mistakes. And so what I, what I absorbed from my church, whether it was intentional or not, and I'm sure it really wasn't intentional, but I learned that God was distant to uh, the world and to larger problems and that he loves me when I behave, but that he is mad and... Um, yeah, is removed when I'm, I'm, when I'm not behaving. And then added to this, there's this layer of my own experience with my family who loved me and did the best that they could, um, but was also very dysfunctional in many ways. And there were a variety of circumstances in my life that required me to grow up quickly and to assume the role of a primary caretaker as one of those things. Um, so I'm the oldest of six kids, and I spent a large time of my childhood caring for younger siblings and then being an emotional support to my mom as well. And so all those experiences combined kind of reinforced my view of a God who was far away. Um, so then bringing it to my experience at Geneva, coming to Geneva as an undergrad was huge for me. Um, and it was my entrance into this world of reformed theology. And I remember walking around campus as a freshman and um, just kind of being overwhelmed by the presence of God and like, this is amazing. This is like a whole new community for me, and there are people who care about me. We pray in our class, which I had never had because I went to a public school. Um, we talked about God in our academic studies. And so just having things like our Bible classes and humanities, we talked about things that my church had never mentioned. Uh, and I kind of felt cheated in this process that I had only learned a small portion of God's character and what he cares about um, in my experience growing up up until then. And uh, I also studied psychology and sociology, which had a significant impact on me as well with the content that we were learning in our classroom. Um, and so then I also studied Spanish, which led me to studying abroad in Costa Rica, which was one of the hardest, but also best experiences of my life. <laughs> um, there's something about living in another culture that makes you vulnerable and really humble but also really open to others and learning and listening from them. And part of the content of the, the courses is that we studied God's heart for biblical justice. 
alongside things like world politics and social issues. And this is all while we're living with people who are very different from me um, and just really being outside of my comfort zone. And then we also had experiences like um, I lived away from our cohort of students for three weeks and we lived in, I lived by myself as the only English speaker in a village and top English school or one room school house. So things like that that I had never done before and yeah, we're very outside of my comfort zone. Um, and so all of that combined with the academic content that was pretty intense, um, like new theological perspectives and all of these uncomfortable experiences in another culture kind of wrecked my perspective of the world. Um, and it was beautiful and awesome, but I also kind of, I came back kind of lost from all of that experience. And I had all of these new passions and ideas about what shalom looks like and what God cares about and these radical ways that people have tried to live those things out. But I didn't know how to fit those experiences into my normal American college student life. And that was like a real struggle for me for a period of time. Um, but I came back to Geneva and I had some key Geneva people who helped me sort out some of those things, who would listen to me process and would pray with me and kind of just offer their own wisdom and perspective. So some of those people were like my RD, and I worked in what is now the Diversity and Inclusion Office, and my supervisor there was really helpful, um, and I took professors, and they really helped me come to terms with where I was with my relationship with God and with my own pieces of my own privilege and my own misconceptions of how the world works. Um, and then again, the academic content itself was really important for me as well. I had classes. Um, like Psychology of Prejudice, and Black Culture in America, and Utopian Shalom. And so it was really cool how all of those pieces of Geneva weaved together with both the academic content and my personal relationships um, that just kind of brought this, this healing that I really needed. But it was still a long season for me for, of searching and doubting and sometimes anger and trying to find my place in um, yeah, how this all works with and what God cares about and how I live that out well and where, where's my piece of that. Um, but through all of that, there's this theme in my life of this relentless pursuit of God who keeps bringing me back to him despite all of my life circumstances, um, or more accurately, probably through all of those circumstances, and who was there even when I didn't recognize him. Uh, and one of the most beautiful outcomes of that time was that it led me to find a local church that also has this wide view of the gospel um, and even bigger, a community of like-minded people who also really believe in a God who is actively believing all things and who invites us to join us on him in that process as well, um, which was really important for me at that time. Kristen, thank you for sharing that story with us. I think... Um, I have a buddy who says that, that God likes to hit us with a baseball bat. And, um, and I, I think that, that, that these experiences that make us question uh, are good. And I think they can take us one of two ways, right? They can either force us down a, a trail of doubt uh, and a, of doubt that, that doesn't question who God is and doesn't, doesn't get to know God more. Um, or we can allow our questions to, to take us into prayer and to take us into uh, fellowship and to take us into community where we dive deeper into understanding our doubts and understanding a God who is a mystery and so much larger than we can fathom. So thank you so much for sharing. Uh, we're grateful for you and, um, and enjoy this day. Our second uh, testimony today comes from Dr. Bob Frazier. He's a professor of philosophy and biblical studies, and, and we're just excited to have him with us today. Um, Dr. Frazier, tell us, how have you seen God's faithfulness in your life? You know, I, I think it's been remarkable from the very beginning, um, God's faithfulness to me. I think of a hymn, moment by moment, I'm kept in his love. Moment by moment, I've life from above, looking to Jesus till glory doth shine, 
moment by moment, O oh Lord, I thine. And that's, um, that's been a testimony, the very fabric of my life. Um, as long as I've known that song and as long as I've been a Christian, and certainly long before, I wasn't raised as a Christian. And so coming to know Christ at 17 revolutionary, revolutionized my life. I was a very bad student in high school, barely graduated, and then Christ took hold of me, uh, saved me by his grace and mercy, and all of a sudden I was interested in school and in the possibility of preaching and teaching and sharing the gospel throughout my life, evidence of God's faithfulness to his covenant children and his call. Um, just a couple short stories. Marie and I were married when we were 20. We were still in college. So we had college to finish and we had seminary to finish and a PhD to, to finish along the way. And at each of those steps, we, uh, we've experienced a fresh and anew, the amazing way that God blesses us with his faithfulness. In college, I was able to move furniture. Um, I know that I look like a great, big, robust kind of guy, but I drove a truck and moved furniture for uh, the nine years it took to get through college and seminary. That was an act of God's faithfulness, giving a call, laying a call on my life, and then providing the means for me to uh, fulfill and accomplish that. Um, it's interesting, when I went to seminary, Marina had already graduated from Gordon. We went to Gordon College. I went to Gordon-Conwell Theological Seminary. Um, as soon as Marina was done with her coursework, um, she secured a job that provided us with a live-in situation, an income, a stipend, and free room and board. So when I went to seminary, we didn't have to worry about the kinds of things that students worry about today. Um, uh, student loans and those kinds of things. We, God provided right up front because of his faithfulness to the call that he had laid on my life. Um, a little bit later when I was doing my PhD, I started the PhD program with two children. I ended up the PhD with four children. Um, and, uh, you know, people used to scratch their head, um, you know, how, how in the world do you make it through? But God provided our, uh, our financial needs, our physical needs. I want to tell one story about it to help illustrate this uh, amazing way that God places a call on your life. And then he's faithful in equipping you and sustaining you and providing for you um, as you walk that path that he's um, deemed for you in life. And so I was um, done with my coursework. I was teaching uh, about three classes a semester in a couple different colleges and universities in Buffalo. I was pastoring a church full time. I was raising four kids with Marina, going to their various activities, coaching baseball and the like. Um, and uh, right as I was writing my dissertation, right at the end, um, I fell ill and I had to sleep every afternoon because of this particular illness. In the midst of that illness, God faithfully reached into my life yet again, gave me the strength to finish the dissertation, to defend the dissertation, and, uh, and to receive the PhD. A remarkable testimony to me of God's fidelity. I remember as I was going in to defend my dissertation, I was very weak physically. Um, defending a dissertation can be a rather intimidating uh, encounter or situation to begin with. You know, a bunch of scholars who are going to tear apart what you've written over the last couple of years. And um, on the way in, uh, a verse from the Psalms, Psalm 27, at the end of the passage, was really what sustained me, God speaking faithfully to me in the midst of the call that he laid on my life. That verse goes, <clears throat> I'm confident of this, that the one who has begun 
I'm confident of this, that the one who's begun a good work in you will complete it. Be strong and let your heart be courageous. Wait for the Lord. I believe that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And that's what sustained me all the way through uh, my dissertation defense and really through this extended period of, of illness that I had. I continued to work and pastor and all the rest, but God was so merciful to me. One final illustration and uh, or one final example, and, that's, and that is this. Um, going back to the 80s, I was... Um, God laid it on my heart to uh, be involved in the renewal of uh, Christendom in Western Pennsylvania. I was away from the area at that time. All of you know, or many of you know, this is my hometown. This is uh, the place that I wanted to be. And, the, um, and I wanted to join forces with Geneva and Presbyterian churches and other congregations in the region to work hard for the renewal of the kingdom in our place so that it might affect every realm of creaturely existence. And here it is, um, years later, that I find myself for the last 20 years not only pastoring in the area, but also being a member of Geneva's faculty, uh, sharing with my wonderful friends, administrators, former presidents like Jack White, who's been a dear friend to me for over 45 years, working together with all of them uh, in partnership with community and churches in the area to see God's amazing transformative grace. Now, the truth is, I think some wonderful things are happening in Beaver Falls. And I think there are some um, amazing uh, cooperative ventures going on between the college and, um, and the community and the churches. And I think when, when I consider that, when I think about that, I think what a faithful God I serve. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. As the hymn writer said, we live into the presence of the eternal God for the uh, for the end of his glory and for the honor of his name. So I, I really appreciate these few moments uh, to share with you a couple little stories about encountering God's faithfulness as he moves, as he has moved me through uh, life as a Christian with my wonderful partner, Marina, in the midst of it, walking step by step with me. To God be the glory. Thank you. To God be the glory. I love it. Um, thank you, Dr. Frazier, for, for sharing with us today. I'm, I'm, I'm in awe of, of God's faithfulness, his goodness and his mercy that you share with us. And, and just those, that those are the characteristics of a God that we, that we know. Uh, and and that we can hold on to in these times. I, I want to thank uh, Kristen Slobodnik and thank uh, Dr. Bob Frazier for for sharing their their testimonies with us this morning. And uh, enjoy your weekend. And we will see you again next Friday. Thank you for having me.